And he entered the room. And went into the temple. And we had looked around at everything as it was already there. He went out to bed and went to pray. Um, so, so we see a deliberate action on the on, on behalf of the Lord. Jesus is, he is trying to deliver stir up chaos. This is him being a troublemaker on purpose. See, he knew when he came in like a king, not Rome was going to get mad with him. See, Rome does not care what he does. He doesn't care. He does, it's like a king on the skin. The big giant of Rome does not care. But when you try to come in here like a king, when you try to come in here like an authority, when you try to come in here like a power, and you stir up the people, Mark can make it real soft. But over there in Matthew, that's why you guys see it, it's synopsis. That means it's recorded in three places. Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, and, 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 uh, and Luke, not John. But those three have a harmony to it. And so Mark just kind of downplays what happened. But Matthew say it was a commotion. It was a stir. It was chaos. Man, they stopped tracking you. Man, what do you think? But Luke said, we didn't have to sing anything. I mean, they were singing that I've never heard before. I mean, they were shouting. They were roaring through the city. So it paints us full of picture that it was a good chaos. So then the Bible said, Jesus paused. And he looked. Now, I want you to know that God will give you your assignment, but he won't tell you everything to do. You go to number nine, but if you go to Genesis chapter 12, God told Abraham to go to a place that he didn't know where he was. He told him to go get from amongst your kinfolk. Get from amongst your daddy and people. Get from amongst this environment. I need you to go somewhere. Where do you go? Yeah, no, I don't know where you want me to go. And it was a process to get that. And so he sent me somewhere. And so I just want you to know that you learn as you walk with God. That's the relationship. It's kind of like your car and your headlights. They do not show you all the way to California. They show you a few feet at a time. When you get to that end, it shows you a few more feet more. And it's that, 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 that new revelation that you get every few seconds. The new revelation. You don't take long. The new revelation you get every few seconds. That's what you get all the way to California. You just need to get new information, new information, new information. That's why you have to keep your eyes on the way. Keep your eyes on the because you get new information, new information, new information. You see something you sign first. Then you get new information. What you do? You say, well, something's in the middle of the world. Turn around and go back home. No. Man, get yeah, this up. You go around, you go again. He gets some new information. Oh, wow. An accident. Horrible thing on the highway. Oh, oh. I'm going to California. You keep going on, man. You get a telephone call. Oh, man. Reveals 
Uh, I'm, I'm at verse 11 on the screen. Alright, when you go back to, uh, when you have a teaching point, and like, like this fig tree, you have a fig tree, you have something in the middle, and you have a fig tree. But, but a true inclusio, it has exact language here, and exact language here, and something in the middle. So this is not a perfect version of that. But one thing to understand in biblical literature, when you have like teaching, the teaching sandwiched by something in the middle, I give you another example of something like this that happened. Go back, that's what's good to see the word. Go back and mark in your mind and your spirit. Mark chapter 5. Does anybody remember how Mark chapter 5 opened up? Three seconds count now. Three, two, one. Go back and run. Alright, so Mark opened Mark chapter 5 opens up the story of the divine man. You remember the story of the divine man? Alright, now what's the very next part that happens in verse 20? Three seconds count now. Three, two, one. So there was a man named And then what happens? Three, two. The woman with the blood. The woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood takes full center stage of the story. And then what happens? Three, Max two. Max Jerry's daughter. Okay, so then now we go away from the woman with the issue of blood and we come back to Jerry's. We saw Jerry's. This lady comes in. We deal with it. Now to find out what's really going on with Jerry's, this is what you need to focus on. What really happened in the moment. So here we have another deal. We have the tree and we have the tree. And then in the middle we have the temple. And so when you understand, you got to look at the middle to understand the bookings. See, so sometimes the bookings won't make sense. This mirror, mirror, it won't make sense. What is Jesus cursing the fish? And why does he expect the fig tree to bear fruit? And it's like, it's not going to bear fruit. Jesus, you made the tree, man. What are you doing? It's the temple. You got to get, you got to focus on the temple. Get the temple to understand Get the temple lesson. And then you can understand these other two. And so we see here, uh, sometimes I tell my daughter, you know, it's conversation the first time. And then it's demonstration the second time. Like I'm explaining to you. To you, the, the discipline aspect first time. Now, this conversation is not a problem. But then, when I teach again, then I have to demonstrate the consequences for not following actions. So, so we see here, uh, he's, he's having a conversation and he's demonstrating. He's illustrating the truth. But I want you to see really quick. Uh, I'm reading more so than anything. And see, and here, Jason, you read. Start at verse 12. Eat that, y'all. Twelve. Now, 
that the fig tree represents. He read a little bit. See, he went out yeah. to find out if there was anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not season for the figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. And, and a lot of times when Jesus speaks, he speaks in symbols, he speaks in metaphors, and, 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 he, and he uses a, uh, a, a rough stroke of communication that natural people can't get. That's all the way in 1 Corinthians, it talks about how the things of God. See, God didn't put them out in his way. He put them right here. Now, come on, man, read this. They get nothing. Now, come on, Jesus, you read this. And the whole world. But it's the same words, it's the same way, but he had no ability to it. But he showed up to reveal it to you. And so, here it is. Jesus is speaking in this way, and he is prophesying to the children of Israel, your time is up. It was a season. It was a time for the fig tree to bear fruit. It wasn't a season for it. So, from a natural perspective, Jesus wants to be patient. And as nature runs its course, the fig tree will bear its fruit. But see, it's the symbolism of the children of Israel, and he said, it's done. You will not be my chosen people. I will find the people that love me, that love me, that crave me, that desire me. So, if you don't want me, time is up. And so, grace is for a season. And after grace, is called what? Judgment. So, grace is for a season, and then it's judgment. That's a, that's a season to get ready. That's a time to get ready. And, and then there's a the time for me. And so that's what's wrong with that. Now we're going to skip. We're going to skip. Now I know that 15 through 19 is significant, but we're just going to skip it. So I want you to see now, if you read these scriptures, one thing you learn is that numbers mean something today. So you know that. You know names mean something today. You're at home studying, you see some names, you see some numbers, Google what it means. And, and hopefully you can Google search it over where it is. That's the way I call it. All right. And then that And it's mixed with something that doesn't have anything to do with that particular story. The, the key revelation is in the middle. When you get revelation from the middle, you will get revelation from the out. But look, look at the Bible. As 20 through 26. Early in the morning, as they were passing by, they saw a fig tree wither from the roots of it. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, the fig tree that you cursed is wither. Jesus replied to them, have faith in God. I assure you, if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, all the things that you pray and ask for, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoing. All right, a lot, a lot of things going on there. But uh, one thing, was Peter amazed because, Jaleesa, was Peter amazed because Jesus did a miracle? Was he shocked that Jesus did a miracle? You think? What do you think? Yes or no? You got 50% chance of being right. <laughs> Jason, you know, right? Do you think Peter was shocked at seeing another miracle by Jesus? He was just like dumb time. Like, what do you think? Okay, no. Listen, these things have been here before. And, and you know, what happened with the disciples and the people of God uh, and, and the followers at this time, they got used to seeing the circus. And so it wasn't as exciting anymore. You know, you, it's the same act that you've seen before. The first time you saw the man in the ring with the lion, you're like, whoa! About a full fifth time, oh, okay, that's how you do that. Thing. You know, it's a big deal. And so they've seen Jesus do these tricks, these moves, the significant, the impossible, in such a way that they stop appreciating. You know, sometimes greatness can be before you, and that greatness becomes so, so, so commonplace to you, you don't realize that greatness is before you. Anybody ever been proud of that? Don't even put it around especially. So what he was shocked by was the timing. It was so swift. It was so sudden. 